Common syndrome is one of a myriad of different problems that can cause delay in puberty, and that is when this is going to present in most cases, in the vast majority of cases. So unlike a lot of the genetic problems that uh, we've talked about in this section, uh, this is not something that's going to present typically in early childhood. This is something that's going to present a little bit later on, probably uh, during the teenage years. So this is characterized by a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, and that's just a fancy way of saying that this is a hypogonadism, a decrease in the sex hormones that's caused due to a decrease in GnRH. And GnRH is the hormone that's responsible from going uh, from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary and causing the secretion of luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. And those eventually are going to go to the testes and the ovaries um, and cause the secretion of testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and so forth. Uh, this is also characterized by anosmia. And there are some other things that can cause anosmia, but on the USMLE, Anosmia is going to be almost always associated with Kalman syndrome. There's not a lot of things really that cause anosmia, and this is one of them. So not all patients are going to have flat-out, complete, 100% inability to smell anything. Um, that's probably how they're going to present the patient on the test, but uh, a lot of these patients will have some degree of ability to smell odors, but it'll be reduced. Uh, so it can be a hyposmia or an anosmia. At puberty, these children, of course, are going to have delayed acquisition or absence of secondary sex characteristics. So the things um, that we would think of would be uh, delayed breast growth uh, in, uh, in females or uh, primary amenorrhea. Uh, in males, you would think of uh, be sort of scrawny, uh, have a micro penis, small testes, uh, they're not developing uh, axillary hair or pubic hair uh, as they should. And so, when you look at their tanner stages, they're going to be relatively immature. Uh, there's a very long differential diagnosis for delayed puberty. A lot of things can delay puberty, but like I said, this is its association with anosmia or hyposmia is very salient, and this is really uh, going to help you with your differential. Now, this is a genetic disorder, of course, and most commonly it's associated with a mutation of a gene called Cal1, and Cal1 is on the short arm of chromosome X. So, in the majority of cases, this is an excellent recessive disorder, and therefore, you're going to have quite a high male-to-female ratio, and that's roughly 4 to 5 to 1. Uh, there are other genes that can be involved. Uh, there's a fibroblast growth factor receptor gene that can be uh, implicated. Um, there's also a couple other genes. Those, when they're affected, have an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, and those are the genes you should suspect if you have a young lady who uh, is showing features consistent with Kalman syndrome. The incidence is 1 in 10 to 86,000. Uh, it really depends on the population, uh, but this is a relatively rare disorder. It is in families, especially if it's X-linked recessive. If you have a young man who shows symptoms consistent with Kalman syndrome, you should definitely get a family history, especially asking mom, do you have any brothers? Was your father, uh, were you, any of your uncles, uh, did they have symptoms consistent uh, or similar to this? Also, please note that even among family members of an affected family, even though it's the same gene, the features can vary. You can have a, an array of uh, different phenotypes. Some people who are affected may have a delayed puberty and they might develop some secondary sex characteristics without treatment. Others will just flat out not go into puberty at all. The features are, of course, the hypogonadism. It's a hyper, uh, sorry, a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, and that uh, indicates that this is a problem of the hypothalamus, not a problem of the uh, of the gonads proper. 
that's going to cause a pubertal delay that can be manifested as primary amenorrhea or delayed breast development in females, sparse to absent facial hair growth, no voice changes in young men. If this presents later on in a male's life or if maybe he developed some secondary sex characteristics and so it wasn't diagnosed early on uh, in the teenage years, uh, it can present as erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, uh, also can cause a decreased muscle mass in males. And so like I said, some of these uh, young men will be a little bit on the scrawnier end of things. Neurologically, of course, it causes anosmia, decreased sense of smell. It can also be associated with gaze abnormalities. You can see bimanual synkinesis. What that means is that the hands have a difficult time uh, doing different things. So, for instance, if you have the patient tap the top of their head and move uh, with one hand and take the other hand and move it in a circle, they'll have difficulty doing that. Uh, so it's sort of a difficulty uh, coordinating the hands to do different things from one another. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions if I didn't make that clear enough. Uh, seizures can be associated with Kalman syndrome in a minority of cases, and then hearing loss can be seen in a minority of cases. Uh, craniofacially, you can see cleft lip or palate with Kalman syndrome, but uh, because Kalman syndrome is rare and there are so many other things that cause cleft lip and palate, it's not going to be a specific thing. Uh, it's, it's not going to be diagnosed early on just because of that. Uh, other things that you can see are congenital heart defects, uh, which may be asymptomatic, unilateral renal agenesis, uh, and then adrenocortical insufficiency can be seen. And in cases where this is present, in a lot of cases at least, uh, the child may have uh, symptomatic adrenocortical insufficiency when they were very young. So uh, if, you have, if there's a history of uh, when they were an infant that they had uh, an adrenocortical insufficiency and needed treatment, that's consistent with Kalman syndrome. But it may not be symptomatic uh, when they're teenagers. So this is the olfactory bulb right here. And as you can see, you go over to a patient with Kalman syndrome, that olfactory bulb is less developed. So this is a uh, teenager with a micropenis. Uh, you also see what would look, if you're just looking at it, like normal testes, but in uh, fact, this is just a scrotum with very small testes inside, so you actually would have to feel it, uh, but the testes are quite small. As far as development, uh, physically, of course, there's going to be a delayed puberty, so that should manifest. Cognitively, these patients are typically normal, however, Kalman syndrome has been rarely associated with intellectual disability. And then socially, of course, with delayed puberty, that can cause issues. Um, these children uh, Teenagers are not developing the same way as their peers, and that can cause some psych, uh, psychologic issues. So for workup, of course, it's always going to start with a good history and physical exam. It's always helpful to have the parents along. Usually the parents are going to be the ones that cart their kids in, say, why is my kid not hitting puberty? He or she's 15 years old, hasn't had her period, he's not gr growing any facial hair, he still sounds like a 10-year-old, what's wrong? Uh, it, at that point, it's always helpful to know if there's any family history of similar issues. And then, of course, it's also useful to know uh, what happened during uh, the early, early, early years, like during the neonatal period. Uh, was there any history of adrenocortical insufficiency, cleft palate? Uh, that can be useful as well. You want to take a look at their growth chart. Uh, you also want to uh, document their tanner stages. Uh, that's going to be, of course, helpful in uh, objectively diagnosing pubertal delay. Uh, as far as labs, you're going to want to get a basic metabolic profile. Uh, what you would want to look for here is a low sodium and high potassium. may not be in the uh, pathologic range, but it could be low end of normal for sodium, high end of normal for potassium. That's consistent with uh, a uh, 
adrenocortical insufficiency. It could be it's usually subclinical. Uh, you want to get a wrist x-ray for bone age, and then you're going to get endocrine testing. Now, the first step with doing the endocrine testing is first to look for whether there is a hypogonadism at all. So we're going to test for uh, testosterone in males. Uh, in females, you can get FSH, LH, uh, but more importantly, in estradiol. And then in all patients, you should get a thyroid function test. Hypothyroidism can, uh, and I think hyperthyroidism as well, uh, can disrupt puberty. Also IGF-1 and prolactin. Uh, so this is going to be your minimum initial battery of endocrine testing um, that you're going to get to start out with because you want to know, uh, one, you want to know is there uh, a hypogonadism, and then two, you want to know are there any disruptions with other hormonal axes uh, that may be interfering uh, with, uh, with the uh, sex hormones. So further diagnostic management is going to include then once you know that there's a hypogonadism, you want to now know is this due to primary gonadal failure. Uh, in other words, the gonads are getting the appropriate hormones, the appropriate signaling hormones uh, to react, but they're not reacting. Uh, in which case this would be a primary hypogonadism, uh, or is this due to the hypothalamus uh, or the pituitary not secreting uh, hormones to signal the gonads to release the sex hormones. Uh, so to do this, you'll get a GnRH stimulation test. And with Kalman syndrome, you would expect that the GnRH stimulation test will cause an increase in sex hormones. So the GnRH stimulation test will increase your FSH, LH, estradiol, testosterone, etc. because you don't have a problem with the gonads. You have a problem with the signaling hormone that's going to the gonads. Now on the other hand, let's say you had a, uh, a young lady with Turner syndrome. In that case, uh, her ovaries are streaked streak-like. I mean, she has very scant ovary tissue. And so in that case, you can give all the GnRH you want. You're not going to get the estrogens uh, that you would otherwise expect. Uh, so that's a primary hypogonadism. This is a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. So once you administer GnRH, you should see a gonad response uh, that would be considered appropriate. Other diagnostic tests that can be considered include an MRI of the brain. In that case, the pituitary hypothalamus should be normal, but there may be an abnormality of the olfactory bulb. Uh, other tests you may consider is a chromosome analysis. Of course, this is going to be normal in Kalman syndrome. In this case, we're just looking at a karyotype. Uh, the test can be considered, though, if there are features consistent with Turner syndrome or Klinefelter syndrome. So in a young lady with Turner syndrome, we would expect to see congenital short stature. We would expect to see the web neck. We would expect to see a, a wider uh, chest. And then in Klinefelter's, uh, this would be a young man who's tall, lanky, maybe has a little bit of breast development, uh, sort of the hourglass-like shape that we would typically expect to see in a mature female. This is something I got from the American Family Physicians Association. Uh, this is uh, a way you can think of working up uh, a uh, delay of puberty. So some things to think of uh, are a constitutional delay in puberty, and this is why it's always helpful to get uh, information from the parents. Some people uh, hit puberty a little bit later than others, and so if the parents, uh, either parent had a delay in puberty, uh, then that can happen uh, for the child as well. Uh, other things to think of uh, are extreme athletic conditioning. Uh, there are a lot of kids that are in sports, and if they really hit it hard, uh, that can delay puberty as well. Uh, so uh, really in any patient who has a delay in puberty, a significant delay in puberty, you're going to get, uh, you're, you're going to get, hormonal testing. Um, the exception to that where you may not start out with hormonal testing is if you have a very clear case of what is probably Turner's or Klinefelter syndrome. In that case, you can just go right into a karyotype 
and uh, possibly forego getting hormonal testing. Although they may, they'll probably uh, wind up having to go on to get hormonal testing because they're going to be treated with sex hormone replacement. Um, but in that case, if you really have, especially on a test, if you have a really clear Turner's or Kleinfelter's patient, don't bother with the hormonal testing. The first step you're going to do to get a diagnosis is a chromosome analysis. Other things that can cause delay in puberty include chronic infection, chronic disease like malignancy, um, and then things such as anorexia nervosa, malnutrition, uh, and then uh, being on chemotherapies. Management is going to be, once you diagnose these patients, is going to be a referral to a pediatric endocrinologist, and they're going to be the ones that uh, prescribe the treatment. Genetic counseling will be useful. Uh, now, so when you're talking about males, they typically are males with Kalman syndrome, um, the fact is that they're not going to have children with, uh, with Kalman syndrome because if they have a boy, then they're not going to get the X chromosome from dad. If they have a girl, it's just going to be they're a carrier. Uh, but they can have grandchildren with Kalman syndrome. And so it's important to know that uh, in, in the back of their mind. Uh, for the parents, of course, genetic counseling can be useful uh, too. If the mom has the gene, and usually she does, she's a carrier, then it's going to be a 50-50 shot that future sons are going to have Kalman syndrome. Uh, another thing that you're going to want to do... Uh, Besides the hormone replacement therapy is you're going to want to get an echocardiogram. Remember that there is an association with congenital heart defects. You'll get a renal sonogram, and then you also want to get a DEXA, and that's just to look for bone density. There is an increased incidence of osteoporosis with these patients. Uh, so hormone replacement therapy is pretty straightforward. For males, you're going to give them testosterone. For females, you're going to give them estrogen and progesterone. And there are various uh, ways that that can be administered. Uh, fertility therapy should be uh, offered when it's desired. However, for males, you'll want to get a sperm analysis first because some of these males flat out just are not producing enough sperm to be, uh, to be fertile in the first place. Uh, but that's something to think of. So uh, with females, they just need the hormones uh, for uh, fertility with males get a sperm analysis first. Some are fertile, some aren't. Uh, so it really just depends. And there are specialists that can help with that. Long term, in the absence of significant heart or neurologic defects, life expectancy is normal. Patients should work in consort with a genetic counselor and endocrinologist when pregnancy or parenthood is desired. Like I said, females are typically fertile. Males can have issues with spermatogenesis. There are ways that you can work around that, working with a fertility therapist, uh, and then some males just won't have issues at all with that. Uh, so this is a young man here with Kalman syndrome. Uh, he's actually in his late 20s, but he hasn't hit puberty. Uh, so presumably this is uh, somebody that didn't get diagnosed with this later on in life.